that even has Kobe Bryant using superlatives about his teammate from Spain. So sit back and watch yet another NBA game, a full plethora of NBA action on Christmas Day. And although these two teams haven't developed a real rivalry yet, they're going to have to face each other in the playoffs. They're certainly the two of the best teams in the NBA. And Mark, when players like Kobe Bryant and LeBron James match up, they won't be guarding each other all the time. In fact, much of the time they won't. But they still kind of push each other a little bit, don't they? Well, no question about it. They take a look at the impact that both are having on both ends of the floor, and they raise the stakes offensively and defensively. I expect to see them when it matters most matched up against each other. The Lakers have been superb at home. 16-2. and two. They've won 11 straight here at the Staples Center. They're quite comfortable here because they've played more home games than anybody in the NBA. Fisher gets the first bucket. Our Spanish language version of today's game presented by ESPN Deportes. Use the SAP function on your television as we have our first turnover. Meanwhile, the Cavaliers roadwise, they're 11 and 6. This is the fourth game of a four game road trip. It started off with a loss in Dallas, but then they've beaten Phoenix and Sacramento, and this is the final game of the trip. Gasol flips it up and in. He's got a big smile on his face. Just signed a new three-year contract extension worth $57 million. I was reading the other day where Kobe Bryant says Pau Gasol is the most skilled player in the post in basketball. I thought about it. I have to agree. Obviously, no weakness can go to either hand and also can hit the mid-range jump. O'Neal misses the hook. Ball batted and taken by Bryant. I agree with, with what Mark said about uh, Pau Gasol. He is so difficult because he can face up as Bryant knocks in the jumper. Gasol can face up against guys who have size like centers, and then he'll post smaller power forwards like J.J. Hickson. And you'll also ask Gasol, where's the biggest improvement on his game? It's defense. And that's one of the reasons that Shaq gets it and goes hard. Shaquille O'Neal throws it down for the first Cavs bucket of the afternoon. And that's one of the reasons the Gasol improvement why right now the Lakers are the number one team in the NBA in opponents field goal percentage. Is that a big surprise? Well, I think it's an improvement. I think you add our test. You have the length now with Gasol and Bynum and you play at home for the majority of your game. You have a chance as Bryant knocks in another jumper. You have a chance to be a dominant defensive team. Bryant is playing with a broken right index finger. He's got a splint on it. It's also then tape for padding he's adjusted the way he shot the ball and although maybe he struggled a bit at first he is not missing the beat right now mark and people don't understand just what it takes for him to prepare for a basketball game talk to phil jackson he says, hey while i'm talking in the pregame meeting bryant is dribbling the basketball preparing his his hand for combat it's an outstanding job of adjusting whatever he has to do Anthony Parker on him. Parker with some good size. Bryant shot that time off the mark. And J.J. Hickson, the second-year forward, the rebound. Well, this year for the Cavaliers, as LeBron James knocks down a three, they win 66 games last year and do not stand pat. They made a lot of changes. Shaquille O'Neal, Hickson now a big part. They get Anthony Parker, Jamario Moon. So it's still kind of a work in progress, isn't it, Jeff? Well, there's no question. They have a lot of work to be done. And they're also trying to reincorporate Delonte West back into their rotation, who's been in and out due to his issue. So uh, I liked a lot of their moves. I like Parker. Uh, I think Delonte West is very good. J.J. Hickson has played better than expected. We'll see how it works out. You know, talking to Mike Brown before the game, he says, hey, expect to see my two big guys playing together in Ogalskis and Shaquille O'Neal. Looks like he's going to that early. It'd be interesting to see who Ogalskis comes in. Good help defense. Our test knocks it away. And that's going to be one of the fun things to watch is Ogalskis will make his first appearance and will play with Shaquille O'Neal because of the size of the Lakers. Three left on the shot clock. Our test guarding LeBron James. It's one of the reasons why our test is on the Lakers to defend players like this. Ogaskis unaware, and there's a situation maybe with him just coming into the game wasn't aware of the shot clock being at three. Nice excuse, Mike, but yeah, you still got to know. You I still have to know time and score. You, you, you beat me to the punch. I mean, how can you come in and not know the shot clock? I didn't say he shouldn't know. I said maybe that's why he didn't know. That's just still an excuse. Just want to get a little Christmas spirit, give him the benefit of the doubt. 
Uh, test off the mark. Nogowska's the rebound. I'm wondering if Mike Brown's going to be so benevolent. <laughs> There's Mo Williams and Derek Fisher. Williams a turnaround shot. And yeah, rolls around and drops in. All right, let's take a couple of the individual guys and important new faces. Artest has the ball. How about Artest? How has his uh, transition been, Mark? Well, to me, it's been you know, smooth, very smooth. You talk about a guy that there was certainly question marks when you look at his body of work and the teams that he's played for. Uh, he has been an ideal teammate. And, and Phil Jackson and, and, and the Lakers players rave about the way he's conducted himself. True professional this season. And, and, and the results show in their record of why they're the best in the business. Bryant, a couple of fakes. LeBron James is on him. Cavalier is one of three from downtown. They're right now the number one three-point shooting team in the NBA. Bynum gets it to Artest. They saw with four on the shot clock. Gets it into Kobe Bryant. Turns, fires, and off the mark. Artest tried to draw a foul and Parker the rebound. How many times do you see LeBron James get bullied underneath the board? Like Artest just did as Mo Williams makes a nice play to O'Neal. And the Cavs on a 7-0 run now. Jack with his second dunk. Gasol with the left hand. Short, O'Neal the rebound. And here comes LeBron James. Fires away from three. And Gasol the rebound. That seems to be a shot that Ron Artest and the Lakers will live with. They went underneath the screen and roll early, allow LeBron to shoot at that time, allows him to stop and pop. Nice pass inside. Gasol, lot of contact. And they're going to wave it off, saying the ball above the cylinder. And Bynum touched it. So offensive interference. Cavs will get it back. Well, the supersized lineup so far of the Cavaliers, their length has caused Gasol a couple problems around the basket where he would normally convert. Now also look at offensively Shaquille O'Neal doing the right thing. You can't lay it up against these bigs on the Lakers. You got to finish it at the rim. LeBron James finishes there that time. And the Cavs now with nine straight points. They missed their first. Well, the Lakers, meanwhile, started off hot and now missed their last eight shots. Bynum ends that drought there. That's the other guy you talk about with the Lakers and why they're so good this year. When he's healthy, you put him with Gasol up front. It's as imposing a front line as you'll find. And he's been consistent all year long. When Gasol wasn't wasn't there early in this season, and Shaq once again finishes at the rim. The catch over the top and finishes. We're talking about Bynum, his presence in the paint and then his scoring ability certainly has been a bright spot all season long for the Lakers. And I didn't like that defensive possession by Bynum fronting O'Neal. You have to try to make him score over the top at this point in his career. Ryan looking for it. Parker, one of the other key acquisitions for Cleveland, getting all those extra minutes. As we saw, it's the pretty feed from Bryant. The Lakers back within one. What a luxury to not only be able to score, but also have guys that can catch and finish. Bryant makes the play, and then Gasol does the rest. Chance of defense, which is an appropriate chance for this Laker team, the way they've defended so far this year. Our test on James, shot clock winding down. James falling away from the right corner, comes up short. Another nice pass, a hard foul, O'Neal knocks Gasol to the ground, and goes right to help him out. With just a good, clean, hard foul from O'Neal, making sure they know his presence will be felt down there. This is just good old-fashioned basketball. Nothing dirty. Shaquille O'Neal forcing Pau Gasol to go to the line and make two free throws. On the offensive end, you front Shaquille O'Neal. That's the wrong thing to do. The correct pass over the top, finishes at the rim, and then LeBron James moving without the basketball. Outstanding job. Wanting it and then catching it in rhythm, attacking the basket. That's good execution by the Cleveland offense. Cavaliers, the fourth best shooting team in the NBA. They're 50% from the field with their one-point lead. But his shooting has been off the charts. Again, last five games, he's averaging just under 36, shooting 52%. He's still second in scoring. It's unbelievable over the past couple of years. And, you know, sometimes we all we get too crazy, make too much of certain injuries. But this one really impacts the shot mark, and the way he's been able to adjust it in such a short time is pretty impressive. You know, if he was Jeff Van Gundy doing this, at a small Division three school, that'd be different. 
He's doing it against superior talent night in, night out. It's a thing of beauty to watch him want to be great on a constant basis. Good point. Hold on. No, like when I was playing against St. John Fisher and Mark Johnson, and if I had a bad wheel, I just couldn't get it in the lane. <laughs> I mean, he was that good. I had to be at, at my very, very best. <laughs> Anthony Parker, who's been at his best, knocks down that one a two-pointer. Parker and Gibson have been 1-2 in the NBA in three-point percentage. Parker, very underrated, but a very good pickup for the Cavaliers this year. Bryant <laughs> gets a couple of oohs from the crowd. Ogowskis the rebound. I still think LeBron James and Kobe Bryant should have to match up against each other at both ends of the floor. And a hell ball with Odom and Fisher. And right now, for the first time, let's welcome in Lisa Salters. Merry Christmas, Lisa. Merry Christmas, guys. And Jeff Van Gundy, you may get your wish. You guys touched upon it. The marquee matchup, certainly Kobe versus LeBron. But it is Ron Artest who will get most of the defensive assignment against Kobe, against LeBron James. And uh, he told me yesterday he's, he believes that he is the best, one of the best wing defenders to ever play the game. LeBron says, yeah, he's good, but I don't adjust my game for anybody. Phil Jackson has said that Artest will get the bulk of that defensive assignment. But at the end of the game, end of the game situation it will be Kobe Bryant so if the game is on the line look for the superstars to match up and that's really what everyone wants to see right that's right Lisa uh, Kobe wants him he'll take him although Jackson did say he's interested to see how Ron Artest plays LeBron James he told us before the game that I really didn't watch tape of how he played him when he was with other teams I want to see how he handles it with our defensive scheme meanwhile that's a three shot attempt a three point attempt for Parker on the foul from Bryant, and Parker is the guy all of a sudden who's playing a big role on a big team. Parker, a former first-round pick out of Bradley, first three years in the NBA with uh, Philadelphia, hardly played, then became a star over in Europe. Five years in Israel, multiple championships and MVP, and then came back to the NBA playing with Toronto last several years and played very well for the Raptors in the past three seasons until the Cleveland Cavs got him. And this guy can play, Jeff. Oh, very solid. Can shoot the long ball. Very good length and defensive ability. And just knows how to fit in to a very good team. Trying a free agent deal. Two years, five and a half million. That's considered a bargain for a guy who's now a starter on an elite team. So it's been a ten-point turnaround. Lakers. One point one six. Now down four. Odom, who just stepped in, tips it over the left hand. It shows you good things happen on the offensive end when you attack the paint area. The bigs of the Lakers have the ability to, to offensive rebound because of the pressure. The Williams to James, get out of the way. He gets one of those cuts every game when Mo Williams penetrates to the baseline. Instead of just spotting up, he times and cuts through the lane. Very good play by the Cleveland Cavaliers to get LeBron James an easy one. Gasol. Ogaskis coming out on him. Gasol stripped by Ogaskis off of Gasol's leg. Excellent defense from Big Z. And we'll have a timeout as we get under the three-minute mark. Well, this is something that Cleveland is doing well. A little pick and roll. They screen for LeBron James. LeBron James cuts right down the middle. Very good execution by the Cleveland Cavaliers. about what Chicago did wrong. How about a team hanging in there and fighting down 35 in the third quarter, 33 with 18 minutes to go in the game, and finding a way to win? It was the best and biggest comeback in the NBA in 13 years, and they did it on the road, which was so impressive for that young team. Now, I'm going to say, if I was the coach of Chicago, that might have been my last game, whether they... I, I, I might still be on the Chicago... What is that, Sears Tower? <laughs> Threatening to jump. Benny Del Negro handled it very well afterwards, said all the right things, but that was certainly a difficult one for the Bulls to take. LeBron James throws it away. Third turnover for the Cavaliers. Artest turns and shoots. Bill Jackson says he actually has to ask him to be more aggressive looking for his shot. Yeah, there are times during the course of this season already where he's been too passive trying to make plays for other guys and, and run the offense through Bryant. He's good enough to force guys to defend him. Ogalskis misses. Odom corrals the rebound. Odom lobs it in. 
Buying it back out. Farmar just in. First shot. And throws up an air ball as Verjao gets it. That's been, if you want to be a nitpicker, the Laker bench has not played up to par. That's the one thing you can say is James gets an easy one down low against Artest. You know, Coach, you raved about the strength of Ron Artest. Well, that time, LeBron James showed his strength, the ability to catch, keep Artest on his back, and finish. And you wonder if LeBron James, as Kobe travels, if LeBron James ducked in like this every time from the post, who could handle him? I mean, that depth, that skill level, he doesn't have to post up outside the lane. They, they can get him in the paint two feet deep. Those two might be the most physically imposing wing players in the game today. We know James is. It's Delante West, first shot. Knocks it down. And the Cavs have opened up an eight-point lead. So it's a 14-point turnaround. Parker deflects it. Right out to Bynum. Bryant misses that one. Lakers shooting right now from the field, just 7 of 21. And the best defense in the NBA is having problems right now stopping Cleveland. West kicks it out. James. Lagowski's tip won't go. Cavs are the best first quarter team in the NBA. They average 29 a game. Nice pass inside and Kobe Bryant with the finish. And the Cavs this year in the first quarter shoot 56% from the field for an average. That's pretty incredible. Well, when you have a superstar that, that is also an outstanding passer, it makes life easy for you on the offense, man, because he's looking to make plays not only for himself, but for guys around. Fourth turnover for the Cavs. And I really like how LeBron James is moving without the ball this year, making the game easier for himself. About two-second difference between the shot clock and game clock. They had a foul to give. And Parker commits it, so they'll inbound. Kobe Bryant tried to throw it up, make it look like in the attempt. Smart idea. Not going to get him anywhere, though. Bryant coming off a spectacular game. And in their last game, they played Tuesday against Oklahoma City. He had 40 points in that game, along with eight rebounds, six assists. Down 12, came back and won. Talk about surprises. How about Oklahoma City? I'm not as surprised by them. I, I think their talent level is worthy of where they're at, and I think it'll continue to get better. Odom will inbound. Shot clock is off. Vujicic comes in for the first time. Ryan against Jamaria Moon. Drives hard to the basket, banks it in. Good, hard, aggressive move from Kobe Bryant. Nearly threw it away. Gibson will not get it off in time. And that will end the first quarter. An impressive one for the Cavaliers as they shoot 56% from the field. And this presentation of the NBA Christmas Special presented by Sprite will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Center and Merry Christmas to everyone, including you, Mike Brown. Uh, Mike, you guys got off to a slow start, but then went on a 9-0 run. What started to click in for you guys? Uh, you know, we started getting some stops. I thought uh, they, they hit some shots early on, and we had a chance to get some looks, but we lost the ball or fumbled the ball here and there. And uh, you know, as the game went along, we got a little bit better flow. We got the ball inside the shack. Some Bron did a nice job posting up, and then. We just contested shots and tried to keep them off the glass. Shaq very active in that first quarter. You told us before the game that there would be cases where Shaq and Z would play together. In what situations might we see that? Uh, you know, Lakers are a big team, and uh, it gave us problems last year with how big they were. So, uh, it, you know, it, it's good to be able to uh, have two guys that are over seven feet combat two of their guys that are over seven feet. So it can happen uh, often tonight. All right, thanks for your time. Thank you. Guys. All right, Lisa. And Jeff, you like the way those two, that tandem work. And even though Ogalskis is out now, another big guy, Varejao, is in there. Well, they stay big most of the time. The one thing that that gave them problems with was last year when they didn't have a small four-man, which could be James this year because they've added perimeter players, to guard like the Richard Lewis's 
of the Orlando Magic. And that, to me, was their biggest problem last season in the playoffs. Marajal with that bucket. Three substitutions now in for the Lakers, along with Brian and Gasol, as Kobe misses that one. Jordan Farmar, Shannon Brown, and Lamar Odom in there. Williams looking. Stolen by Farmar. Good defense on the double with Odom. Farmar fires up. Can't get it to go. And Barajal, one of the best rebounders in the NBA, comes off the bench now. Started a little bit earlier this year, but Mike Brown liked him better coming off with his energy. Mo Williams puts it in. Williams having another strong year, his second season in Cleveland. You know, he's a scoring point guard, a guy that when he's knocking down shots, pretty much goes into his zone. But the thing I like about him, he also makes plays on the offensive end. Williams off the turnover, flips it up, and rolls in. Williams had a very big road trip, a couple of big games against Sacramento and Phoenix, and the Cavs go 6-0 to start and have a 10-point lead. Gasol. And Barajal, another rebound, three already. West being guarded by Shannon Brown. Terrific young player who kind of started making a name for himself last year in the playoffs for the Lakers. Barajal cuts to the basket, puts it in. Good pass from West, good finish from the big guy. Love the activity by Barajal, setting the screen and then cutting aggressively to the basket. The Cavs are shooting 64% from the field. Oh, pretty move from Bryant, switching to the left hand. Well, if you put Kobe Bryant into a pick and roll where O'Neal has to be the big guy to try to contain him coming off, you're going to get a quality shot every time. Ryan 5 of 11 from the field. Mo Williams feeds inside. Barajal fumbled it. Shot clock winding down. Barajal looking up and under. He's a scoring machine here in the second quarter. Andy Barajal, six points, three rebounds, and seven minutes off the bench. That's bad defense. He made me dizzy the way he was spinning around in there. Not known as his forte, but he is very aggressive. Mo Williams trying to draw the foul. It's the side of the backboard. Williams gets it back. And right now, the Cavs just playing much more aggressively. West on the drive. Top shot, Delante West. A huge second quarter. And the lead up to 14 for Cleveland. And you can tell the mindset of the Cavs with this unit strictly pick and roll. Mo Williams and also Delante West getting into the scenes, making plays. 12 to 2 run to start the second. Odom the offensive rebound. Back into Bryant. And Kobe Bryant will go to the line. And we're going to have our first time out of the second. The Cavs bench getting things done. Mark Jackson. A scoring machine. Not LeBron James, not Shaquille O'Neal. Anderson Varejao setting the screen. The worst thing to do is to stand. Instead, he slices to the hoop, gets the easy basket. Then moving without the basketball, it's just me and. Laker defenders, time to dance. Marajal having his way. The only average is eight points a game. He's got six here on the second. And the Cavs lead by 14. And at San Antonio without Roy, could be the two best back-to-back -back wins this year. Jared Bayless put on a show. Jawan Howard played 37 minutes, had 12 rebounds. I mean, they got contributions across the board. It was that's just great basketball. And, and I know you're usually the one giving credit to the coaching, but I'm going to say they're a, an example of they, they feel from their coach. He is a mental, Nate McMillan, who's injured himself, mentally tough player, same thing as a coach, and the team, they really feed off him. You got to give credit to those guys. Being ready when called upon. Bayless is a guy that could be frustrated because he has, has not had the opportunity when he got his moment took advantage of it, fully capitalized, and Juwan Howard, just a guy that's been doing it for a long time. Right, I, I coached him, that guy's a pro's pro, and, but you're right about Nick McMillan. Steely demeanor, and just great disposition. Any young coach could learn from how he handles himself in difficult situations. And no excuse, coach, as West picks it up. West pushing, kicks it outside, offensive foul. There at Fisher for years has been one of the very best in the game at drawing charges and does it right there. Fisher now 35 years old in his 14th year in the league, still stepping in front of everybody. 
Six turnovers to Cleveland. And they're up a dozen because they're shooting so well. Fisher lines that up. We're still doing that too. And the veteran Fisher said after this year, he still wants to play a couple of more years. He's in great shape, still contributing. Here's Jamario Moon. Moon, the other free agent. Another new face for the Cavs, Mo Williams. Nice shot. Well, one thing to pay attention to is Mike Brown has given LeBron James plenty of rest, and this bench has ext extended the lead. Where Phil Jackson has kept Kobe Bryant in the ball game has not found a rest yet, and the Lakers have not found a rest. Vujicic misfires. Vujicic has really been struggling with the shot, trying to work out playing less minutes. Mo Williams comes down and knocks down another 11 points for Mo Williams. He has been on a tear the last several games. And a lead now up to 15 largest of the game. The Staples Center's got a little quiet. And Ogowskis a little over aggressive in denying Gasol. He scored with his back to the basket on the previous possession here. Mo Williams, semi-transition. Got great speed, so Vujicic gave him a cushion, pulled up for the off the dribble three. LeBron James back in. While he was sitting, the Cavs outscored the Lakers 17 to 6. Vujicic, extra pass. Good defense from Barajal. Boom, for the basket. Nice throw down for Moon. The defense starting the offense again for the Cavs. That's still their bread and butter outside of LeBron James. Turn the basketball over against this Cleveland team. They'll make you pay the price. That time Moon and James making the play. I actually heard a guy behind me just threw the Lakers. Easy, buddy. <laughs> they, they got booed earlier this season in a loss to Houston as Gasol misses. Ogaskis has it. It's a team that's 23 and 4. Well, Houston's the hardest playing team in the NBA. It's not even close. So Cleveland, to me, is doing that tonight. They're just playing so hard defensively. It's difficult for the Lakers to search out a good shot other than Kobe Bryant. And here you're hearing boos. It's unbelievable. This team's 23 and 4, and they're getting booed. And it's Christmas. Mark, explain this to me. I'm baffled, especially when you talk about as Ogowskis knocked down another shot, Phil Jackson saying, I've, I've seen enough. But especially when you talk about the ability of this Laker team to bounce back at any moment. And Jackson calls timeout as they fall behind by 19. Unbelievable play from the Cavaliers. Great teamwork, excellent defense, 64% shooting from the field. Cavs up 44-25. The new series premiere Thursday, January 21st at 8, 7 Central on ABC. Lakers down 19. Phil Jackson not happy, and this was a couple of timeouts ago. Hey, get after the ball. Rebound. Bear Jaws all over the place. Hit the first guy open and move the ball. We're going to get going if we move the ball and move ourselves. All right, here we go. Right now, the Lakers are not playing nearly as aggressive and as hard as the Cavaliers. I'll give more credit to the Cavaliers than I think the disappointment with the Lakers performance. I this is an outstanding performance. Last game of the road trip. Just playing unbelievably sound defense from an outstanding defensive team. Oh, Brian can't control it. All five starters back in for L.A. Brian now for the game, 5 of 13. Mario Moon, good size on him. Yeah, he's going to try different... Oh, nice tip in from Ron Artest. Well, Barajas taking shots. He's got knocked around. He's made whirling dervish type moves. He's huffing and puffing out there. Ilgowskis, he can hit from long range. Not that time. Gasol, who's been on a rebound and tear, grabs that one. 
Bynum. Nice move. And finish. This is like the old days with all these seven footers out there. West for three. Dante West from downtown. He's off to a good start. Three for three from the field. And that's good recognition by LeBron James. Ron Artest falls down on the offensive trip. Push the ball five on four. West winds up with a wide open jump. Look at those bench points. This is 17 bench points for Cleveland. Just two for the Lakers. Oh, he pushed the ball for a reason. Put pressure on the defense. Four guys back. Ron Artest in a home run trot. Delonte West making them pay the price. And Mike, you mentioned about the old days with the size on the floor. Take a look at the really good teams. And they're playing mobile bigs that are also have great size. Gasol is like that. Garnett is like that. Rasheed Wallace. Uh, you could make the case for Shard Lewis isn't really like that, but he is a good, legit 6'10". So you have to play size and mobility, and that's what the great teams can do. Barajal gets it from James, flips it up in the basket, rolls off. Now Gasol, he's 4 3 back. There was a bad shot by Barajal. Rodowskis all by himself in the corner, has proven he could make that corner three. Bryant goes right at Moon trying to draw the foul. Moon started going up the floor, and Bryant able to get it. Fisher for three, puts it in. Boy, Lakers really needed a bucket there. They've fallen behind by 20. That's their first three pointer. And to me, those type of baskets where you leak out early and then give up a three, it can be the sign of, of a run by the other team. LeBron James throws it down. That's a big time move, a little dream shake. Gets to his right hand and finishes over our test. Bad pass from Fisher. Fisher with a couple of turnovers here in the second. Test trying to body up. Splits the defenders down a lane. And a whistle. That basket won't count. A foul on the way to the hoop. And we'll have another timeout. Cleveland Cavs mark in complete control right now. Big time move by LeBron. I can promise you that no reindeers will harm during the process of this move. LeBron James spectacular one-on-one -on -one play. Ron Artest, I'm too big, too strong. Right hand, nothing but net. Lakers came into this game, the number one defensive team in the NBA. The Cavs are shooting 63% with their 19-point lead on the road. Under three minutes remaining here in the second. Cavaliers all over the Lakers, 49 to 30. Coming up, the T-Mobile Halftime Show. Stuart Scott, Magic Johnson, and Michael Wilbon in the studio. Magic and Kobe, a conversation. We'll have all the Christmas Day highlights as well. And Shaq's Christmas Wish coming up on the T-Mobile Halftime Show. In a game where we feature Kobe Bryant, LeBron James. James has been superb. Even Kobe Bryant so impressed with LeBron James's abilities. His size, and, you know, and the thrust. I mean, he comes at you. I mean, he comes at you with a lot of speed and, um, and a lot of power. I mean, he dips his shoulder, gets you in foul trouble, gets everybody else involved by doing that. So, you know, you just gotta, just gotta play fundamentally sound defense. Well, and here you're seeing that power in a different form on this duck in where he just catches it that deep. There's nothing you can do, and that's against one of the strongest men pound for pound to ever play the game in Ron Artest. I think you could make the strong case that LeBron James is the greatest athlete to ever play NBA basketball. Speed, strength, jumping ability. I don't think it's even close. I'm trying to think. I don't think it's close. When you take a look at the package, as far as his strength, his ability, I don't think it's close. All right, who's in the conversation with him? Well, obviously, there's a guy that used to play with Chicago named Michael Jordan that can do some things. But this guy is naturally strong. He had this at 18 years old. But he can't dunk an alley-oop. <laughs> so Gaskis, good pass. James just missed it. Artest down the other way. Gets it back. And he gets hammered, gets hit in the face. And Ogaskis quickly says to him he didn't mean it. Our test a little upset. Danny Crawford trying to cool him off a bit. This is just poor execution by LeBron James. We're talking about him. We're giving him props. Your job is to finish the play so we can continue talking about you. That's well, inexcusable. Well, I think it's part. Of, he's starting to show his age. He's going to be 25 next Wednesday. Do you think you can ever get up too high on a dunk? 
I've been there, so I would say yes. <laughs> like, like, I'm just going to go with this, too. A superstars competition. Remember the old superstars competition? Right. I'm taking LeBron James to win the whole thing. I'm putting Kobe Bryant in there because of his will. Let's take a look again at the dunk. Now, that's just a miss. Right. You don't see that often, but yes, he is human. This team, though, still up big as Artest misses the first free throw. Watch the fuck out, man. Watch out. Oh, man. Looked like somebody touched it. Maybe not. Anyway, it goes in for Artest. Oh, pretty close, didn't it? Looked like it, somebody touched it, too. I couldn't tell you who, though. J.J. Hickson back in for Cleveland with Jamario Moon, Mo Williams, Verajal, and LeBron James. Under two and a half to play in the second. It's been all Cavaliers since the opening couple of minutes. The Lakers came out strong, and then the Cavs have dominated since. He backs up, fires away in three. Well short, and it's Laker ball. You look at his shooting numbers this year, considering how he's double and triple team, he's shooting 50% from the field. 37 from downtown. His mid-range game has gotten so much better. Oh, a lot of contact there. Right inside, blocked with a foul. Marajal hit him. They're letting him play. It's been a fairly physical game so far. Some contact there. Uh, Bryant right there to pick it up and draw the next one. Lakers have only taken six free throws. The Cavs only three. MVP chance for Kobe Bryant. He won that honor two years ago. LeBron James won it last year. Kobe got the more important finals MVP. Get up, get up, get up. As he gets that. Our NBA calendar, ESPN later tonight, the doubleheader. Clippers and Suns coming away from Phoenix, then Denver at Portland. NBA Saturday, Washington at Minnesota. And then TNT next Thursday, the Heat and Spurs from San Antonio, Sixers and Clippers from Los Angeles. What was that Saturday game? Washington at Minnesota? Minnesota? What's next? Minnesota at New Jersey? Stop, stop. <laughs> Some young, young upcoming teams. Our test. It's inside. Draws the foul. Can't get it to go. And our test will go back to the free throw line with 148 remaining. And if you're the Cavs, this is a big point in the ball game. This is good hands by Ron Artest, so good at allowing guy, a guy to go by him and using that left hand to deflect the basketball. But this is a crucial point, Coach, because you want to close out this half. You've done everything right to put yourself in position. you got to close it out. No question. The last, to me, five minutes of the half and the start of the half, you know, how you start the half, how you end the half, how you start the second half, and how you end those 20 minutes are the most critical 20 minutes. And they would be closer right now, except our test has missed a couple of three-point play opportunities and subsequent free throws. A test, you saw the numbers as O'Neal still sitting on the bench. Good solid numbers. He's had a couple of incidents where the eyebrows were raised. He went on the Jimmy Kimmel show here in L.A. in just his boxer shorts. He had that interview with the Sporting News where he talked about when he was with Chicago that he drank at halftime, then he changed it to we drank before the game. So there's always a little drama as James knocks down Fisher. Fisher trying to draw an off the charge, off the ball charge, and he did so. As James picks up his first, doesn't like the call. I don't either. Come on. You got to know. That's just a flop. Anybody can run in front of anybody running down the court. Hey, give Fisher credit in this way. He's done it his whole career, and the referees still don't know he's going to do it. <laughs> the Lakers get it back. Artest inside. Lefty Lamb. Nice play from Artest. He thought he got hit there. And all of a sudden, the crowd a little fired up on a 6-0 run. Good job by Lincoln, re recognizing there's no size on the front line of the Cavs, and they are looking to get into the scene. Alley up to Moon. Nice pass. Jamario Moon in his first year with the team. It's a beautiful feed, and that's LeBron James' fifth assist. 
Artest, he likes this matchup. Foul count and one. The strength of Ron Artest. He's, Ron Artest is at his best, close to the basket here. Seals deep in the paint. Good use of his arms to come up through the contact of Moon. He cannot be guarded by slight men. It's overpowering strength that he possesses. A former NBA Defensive Player of the Year, but he also has shown at times in his career he could be a big time scorer. He does not have that role on this team, but he could score in a lot of different ways. That's why I think Phil Jackson has handled him well. I don't care if I'm Phil Jackson that he went on the Jimmy Kimball show with Short Song or he talked about his past. The bottom line is the guy has been a big time part of what this team has been able to accomplish. Bryant on the drive gets inside and it's cut to 11. And it's just what Mark said. The reason the Lakers were struggling to score throughout this whole first half was because of the size and shot blocking. Now no size, no shot blocking on the floor by Cleveland. On a 10 to 2 run as we wind down the second period. James to Hickson. Hickson spinning against Gasol, gets it up in the air. And some contact, but they'll let him play at both ends. Two on the shot clock for the Cavs. Also easier to defend the pick and roll. You're throwing it back to Hickson. Dare him to make shots and then contest underneath. West will inbound. Sean Corbin telling Jamario Moon, tuck in your shirt. Mike Brown, who knows what he's saying to Danny Crawford. Untuck your shirt. <laughs> I did. to Hickson. Shot short. And the Lakers will hold it for the final shot. They had been dominated for much of this first half, but they finished with a flourish. And Bryan wants to play one-on-one -on -one with the smaller than Andrew West. Bryan on the drive inside. Draws the foul. And he'll go to the line with 2.3 remaining. Well, it just shows how smart he is. Realizing the small defenders on them rather than going to a pick and roll situation where they can trap or switch and get a bigger guy on them, he gets everybody out of his way and puts the pressure on West, creating the contact. He has played the entire first half. Earlier this season, he passed Kareem Abdul Jabbar and is the second all time leading scorer in Laker history. He's probably got about at his pace. 20 games to go, and he'll pass Jerry West and become the franchise's all-time leader in points. Well, when you're the Cavs in that situation, you got to do a better job of closing the, the straight-line drives of Bryant. you got to be in position to help and force him to get rid of the basketball. Bill Jackson was telling us before the game he thought the injury to his finger affected his passing and defense more than his shooting. He's perfect from the line, six for six. James looking. Hickson gives it right back to James. Half court count as it goes. Oh, he put it in. Three pointer from half court at the buzzer. Now they'll review it. No, they wave it off. Danny Crawford said no. But they'll look at it on the replay. It was very close. Wow, that's close. And interesting, they had Pau Gasol matched up against him. Let's see. In his hand. I, I'm still not sure, and I've seen it twice now. That's why they have replay. They can slow it down. Nope. nope. In his hand. Still on it. From there, it looks like it's still in his fingertips. Yes. Uh, it, it should not count. And Danny Crawford on the court, the ruling on the court was no. That's the right call. The Lakers could care less what it was. They left the floor already. Cavs stayed around to see what the outcome was. LeBron still with a strong first half, 11 points, five assists. He's with Lisa. Thanks, guys. LeBron, what happened on that last shot? I saw you watching it just as Danny Crawford was reviewing it. I just didn't get it off in time. I know you didn't end the quarter, close out that half the way you guys wanted to. What changed for you guys? Uh, they picked up aggressive on the defensive end. We didn't handle it the right way. Uh, we just got to be a little bit more physical on the offensive end to get into our sets. All right, thank you for your time.
Well, after the break, stay tuned. The T-Mobile Halftime Show is coming up. Stuart Scott, Magic Johnson, and Michael Wilbon will be back in the studio. Amongst their topics, a conversation. The Cavaliers just competed harder than we did. He said, that's got to change, guys. All right, Lisa, most impressive again. Hasn't been on the road for a week now. This is the fourth game of the trip. They're playing against the best defense in the NBA statistically, and they shoot 56% in that first half. O'Neal had a quick start for Cleveland. Short. Comes up short that time. Battle for the rebound. Ogowskis. And it's Ogowskis and O'Neal starting the third quarter. Mo Williams nails the three. Williams is third in the NBA in three-point field goals made. That's a good job of moving the basketball off of the offensive rebound. Unselfish play, you find a shoot in the corner. And I like Mike Brown's move to go back to the lineup that was so good to them in the first half instead of going back as Gasol makes it to their original starting lineup. Why, just because you're starting a second half, do you have to play a group that wasn't as effective as this group? Good move by Mike Brown. I think part of that also is saying, hey, I allowed them to get back in the ball game by going with a small lineup. So certainly forced in realizing this is how we can be most effective. Parker blocked by Bryant. Bryant, one man to beat. And Williams lets it through. The defense and a dunk. I was surprised that Bryant outran Ilgoskis there. It was even at half court. I was shocked. <laughs> big Z can run. Runs like a deer, a big deer. but Bryant. Knocked it out. Kobe Bryant, third in the NBA in steals, in addition to being second in the league in scoring. Well, this is just a good play, blocking the ball from behind. And if I'm Mo Williams there, I'm taking that foul. I don't have a personal foul. I am making Kobe Bryant make two free throws. LeBron James on the court, line drive won't go. Good boxing out by the Laker Bigs, and here comes Fisher. Bynum. Bynum was quiet in that first half and plays off an air ball, and he thought O'Neal hit him. Mo Williams, another three. Both teams complaining about contact on their shots. Ryan drives, gets inside, blocked from behind by Williams. Bryant gets it back, left-handed. What was that phrase, Mark, that Bill Jackson said? There's no retreat in him? Absolutely. The guy never surrenders, and you got to give him credit because, like I said during the open, that type of mentality, that type of approach is contagious, so they always believe that they're in ball. Well, Williams knocks down another. You know, that's the third time they posted him up against Derek Fisher. He's a very good post defender. And Mo Williams has gotten a good shot off each and every time, scoring twice. Mo Williams last year, strong year in his first year, O'Neal with the block with a foul. Shaq, the wide-eyed look at the official, didn't like it. That's his third foul. Well, here's Mo Williams. Very few guards know how to post. The man to the right of me, Diz, just an inside pivot to create a little separation. Nice little jump shot. Again, very few guards know how to play with their back to basket, offensively or defensively. Mo Williams got a nice little game down there. Mo Williams now in his seventh year in the league. He's now the secondary guy. Last year, his first year with the Jazz, averaged almost 18 a game, made his first All-Star team, started his career with the Jazz, then four years with the Bucks. a nice player, but became an All-Star. But he did not play well in the playoffs for him, especially in that Orlando series, and he said, you know what? I just had to go through it. He says, I'm going to come through in the clutch this year for him in the postseason. And listen, if you're a 10 handicap, you don't put it up there like it's a sign of pride. You know what I mean, Mike? It's a, it was up on his little bio right there. Oh, 10 handicap, yes. Because you know his 10 is really probably a 15 or an 18. That depends on the golfer. Some guys don't lie about their score. Well, how about you? Many pad. I'm picturing Mo Williams as an 18. 18? Yeah, like when the ball goes out of bounds, acting like he's got a free drop. <laughs> I'm not going to let you go at Mo Williams like that. He seems like a very honest guy. You think he takes mulligans? And he gets a three-point <laughs> shot. But also, anybody, what, did, what music did he listen to, he said, proudly? What was that? Remember there, back there in the day? Uh, we'll come back to it. <laughs> well, he's going to shoot three free throws off the foul. Nice little fake to get Gasol up in the air. Anyway, he's an 18 handicap. 
masquerading as a 10. He's having just as good as a year statistically. As he hits that one. Reminder our NBA Christmas special presented by Sprite. The doubleheader continues tonight on ESPN as the Suns host the Clippers. And then at 10.30, it's the Nuggets taking on the Blazers from Portland. He used to listen to In the Air Tonight by Phil, Phil Collins. Collins. Yeah, so any NBA player that listens to Up in the Air by Phil Collins is lying about his handicap. <laughs> All right. Gives a lot of his credit to Jerry Sloan, the one year he played in Utah. He didn't play a heck of a lot. He remembers Jerry Sloan yelling at Andre Kirilenko. Kirilenko was the star at the time. He says, if a coach can yell at the star, I better be ready to play and practice in practice and games every day. And Mo Williams is one of those guys that every year he seems to get a little bit better. He's a little guy. He's only six foot one. Played his college ball at Alabama. It's just incredible the same way at this level on any level you get an opportunity and you have some some success your confidence will carry you a long way. Parker with the block from behind. Excellent defense from the Cavs. We talked about the Lakers being the best in the NBA in opponents field goal percentage. Cavs are number two. James draws the foul. And is our test. With the personal. And we witnessed Kobe do it to Parker a couple of possessions ago on the defensive end. Now Parker says, let me return the favor. Merry Christmas to you. Not giving up on the play, contesting the shot. Comes with the block shot from behind. Big time defense by Parker. James misfires on the first free throw. He's 79% from the free throw line this year, as usual, amongst the leaders in getting to the line. I like what the Cavs are doing. The Lakers climb back into the ball game. They found a way to stop the bleeding and get a run of their own. They've only taken eight free throws so far in this game. As we're coming up on four minutes gone by, third quarter. Here from Staples Center, where the Lakers have won 11 straight at home. They're now down by double figures. Our test can't get up. They were down by as many as 20 in the first half. Our test again. And Ogowskis the rebound. Lakers just one of seven from three-point range. And that's going to be a backcourt violation. Turnover number 10 for Cleveland. Mike Brown, you saw him sitting on the bench. It's in his fifth year as a head coach. He was the coach of the year last year, 2009. A lot of pressure to be the coach of the Cavs this year. High expectations, anything shy of getting to the finals is probably looked upon as a disappointment. You have LeBron James who could become an unrestricted free agent. Brown has handled the pressure very well. And has shot another block. Brian very upset. He's got to be careful. Here comes Bo Williams. And a blocking foul on Fisher. And there's the technical foul on Kobe Bryant as he slams the ball down. Where's the foul, he says to Kevin Fair. Let's take a look at the play that had him upset. Well, it's clear that O'Neal's in the restricted zone. That's a definitive foul because O'Neal did not leave the ground. That's a block. Brian has every right to be displeased with the non-call. Let's see again. Yeah, there's been a lot of contact and a number of shots. No, but if you're, he's in the restricted zone, that certainly impacted his shot. That's a foul. And also where the, the arms are extended straight up, the difference is the body goes into Kobe Bryant. So a lot of contact. And I expect to see Bryant become more aggressive and get into to the paint area, forcing the issue, getting to the line. Now, they're saying the technical foul was not on Kobe Bryant, was now called on Derek Fisher. A couple of Lakers on. They're down 13 here in the third quarter. Merry Christmas, everyone. And thanks for joining us. Spending your holidays with us. A full day of NBA action on ABC at ESPN. Third quarter. The Lakers still down by 11. And here at the Staples Center, the Slebs and Force. Rocky. Sylvester Sloan. 
Snoop sitting courtside with his Laker Christmas hat. Andy Garcia as well. And Danny DeVito, before you ask Jeff, Jack is not here. He's in Aspen. I read that in the paper. I think he spends every Christmas in Aspen. But you saw Snoop Dogg, and I read an article a couple weeks ago when we were here about how improved inner city football is in Los Angeles. In large part, the players said because of the league that Snoop Dogg created for youth football, major props to him as O'Neal dunks it. Beautiful feed from LeBron James. The Lakers claim the ball was above the cylinder. And Shaq just let it go down. Eight points for O'Neal. Ryan against Parker. Gasol. How Gasol puts it in. He's been relatively quiet considering how well he's played. Not in recent weeks. Nine points, five rebounds. Meanwhile, Kobe Bryant, guys, with seven assists. Same as LeBron James. Ogowskis to O'Neal. Shaq able to throw it down again. Now in double figures. All afternoon long, he's done an outstanding job of finishing above the rim. And to me, those dunks have to turn into free throws. Fisher off the mark. And he is not shooting free throws well this season. Ball knocked out of bounds. They're going to say Laker ball. Parker says no. Should have been off the Lakers. The officials check with each other to make sure they got it right. Lamar Odom will come in. And Bynum. Bynum's been bothered by a respiratory infection. He can't seem to shake. And he has a little bit of asthma as well. So it's taken its toll in recent games. Well, I don't like the way he's played so far this afternoon. This is a great coming out party for him with everybody watching going against Shaquille O'Neal. He's allowing Shaq to dominate in the interior. Chess nails it. And it's back to 11. Mo Williams, as you see, back on the floor. Good to see that he's okay after again, probably getting a wing knocked out of him. Same spot posting up, Jeff, that he's done before. Nearly stolen by Brian. Marjol pushes off to get it back. Marjol trying to dribble one on the shot clock. Gilgauskas and a 24-second violation. Kobe Bryant's defense in this third quarter has been excellent. That's why I like this lineup much better for the Lakers. You have the advantage of Lamar Odom making plays, pushing the ball. You don't have to worry about Barajal posting up. Ryan deflected by James, knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Fisher. Well, they had the call wrong. That should be the other way. And Sean Corbin and Wisely will ask Kevin Fair. And that's, that's the change in the right call. LeBron James touched it last. The crowd on the celebrity role reacted so strongly that it made Corbin think twice. Ryan looking. Fisher for three. And James. And a foul call as Odom tried to take it away from LeBron James. Well, a very interesting change for Cleveland in their pick and roll defense, forcing Kobe Bryant to go to the baseline instead of get over the top into the middle of the floor. I think that's a very good defensive adjustment by the Cleveland Cavaliers, and they're really doing a good job of plugging up the paint where there's very little driving room. Oh, while you rave about that defense, I think there's a lot of holes in it. I think if I'm Phil Jackson, I would give a steady diet of Brian and pick and roll situations and basically pick your poison being a score or facilitator. They can have their way. Here's my point about that, though, with the Lakers. If I'm going to play them, particularly on the road, and Lamar Odom can have as many threes as he wants, I'm going to try to run Derek Fisher off his spot. Our test has not shot the three well right now. I've got LeBron James closing to him. I just want to make sure Bryant doesn't live at the free throw line and live at the rim like he did at the end of the second quarter. And they call Bryant for an offensive foul. Bryant and Parker battling for position. It's been pretty physical. 
And I think that's a bad call. From the angle, it looked like that's Bryant. But from this angle, obviously, Parker's the guy shoving the body of Bryant. That's a clear foul on Parker. I think that's let it go. They're both kind of just grabbing onto each other. James steps back. That's a three. And it's good. LeBron James nails the three. And the Cavs back up by 16. I, I really just like how he's playing off the ball. He got the cutting layup. He got a drive off the pin down. Now he gets a three off the pin down. To me, that's a great improvement in his game. Odom misses. James the rebound. I like how poised LeBron is. It's not about me against Kobe Bryant. It's about my team winning. Lakers normally shoot 33% from downtown. They're one for 10. And an offensive foul on Ilgowskis. See, to me, Artest is so good when he's going against you in a set isolation. But moving him off his screen, trying to move that 260 pounds around the screen is difficult. James read that Artest was shooting the gap, fades to the corner, good pass, and knocks down the three. Cavs continue to shoot the ball well, 55%. The solo goes at Ogowska's block, but a foul. Boy, Ogowska's very upset with Danny Crawford. That looked like a pretty good block. That's four on Ogowska's. Coach, I thought you let Le I thought you let Ron Artest off the hook as far as that last possession. That's a poor job as Ilgowskis complaining about the foul on Gasol. That's 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 not a foul. That's active hands. You know what though? You see Mark just at the end, and this is what Crawford saying. He had his right arm around Gasol's waist. Well, that's good vision by you, but what I was talking. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good vision. Hey, I, I give compliments where they're supposed to be. Certainly, you see the right hand around the back of Gasol, keeping him down. So I stand to be corrected. But back to the Artest. That's poor defense. Your job is to keep a body on, on LeBron and then fight through the screen, keep the body on and fight around it. He did a poor job and laid on the screen. You know and I stand corrected because I was talking offense when I should have been talking defense. <laughs> but, I, but I think that's how you attack Ron Artest. You don't try to isolate him. He's got that big body. I just think you have you move him off screens and he's very vulnerable. Hold him the rebound. Lakers down 14 after a hot start. It's been an uphill battle most of the afternoon for them. Bad pass stolen by James. Ten turnovers for the Lakers. Rifles a pass to Parker. Kicks in the rebound but couldn't hold on. That bullet, that cross-court bullet pass, LeBron James can find an open man so easily. Foul on Derrigia, a little over aggressive. That's the fourth team foul for the Cavs. Well, it became a worldwide phenomenon. ABC's lost the final season. The premiere event begins Tuesday, February 2nd at 8, 7 Central. The beginning of the end in the final season. The answers are coming. Right back to Gasol. Good defense from Vergeau and the rebound. You know, Vergeau is not going to score a lot of points. He's going to get a lot of rebounds. His defense is terrific. How come he's never mentioned as a six-man candidate? Because Carl Landry of Houston, that's a runaway <laughs> winner right there. No, you, you watch that guy. No one knows his name. I just mentioned his name. No one knows it in NBA land. That guy does work every single night. That's why Anderson Vergeau, is, he's not a big enough scorer. This guy, Carl Landry, he's a joke how good he is. Well, we saw him last year during the playoffs and even in the Lakers series how good he was. And he got his mouth busted up by Dirk Nowitzki, came back with a whole new set of teeth, <laughs> and got 27. I mean, come on. Part of his teeth were still in Nowitzki's elbow when he had to have uh, some procedure. And that's how hard he took the shot. I know. No, this guy, seriously, who knows his game out in NBA land? His brother who plays for the Knicks, Marcus. Well, he's on the roster. He doesn't play. <laughs> and, and and that's not a bad thing. But I, I like, by the way, talking about the Knicks, they've taken their lumps. I like their shortened rotation. I like how they're playing. They're playing good, solid basketball. Lost to Dwayne Wade tonight. But 
they're playing better. Give them credit. You know, you bring up a good topic. You talk about shortened rotation. Some teams like to go with only playing, say, eight guys, nine tops. Others like Cleveland. They have a lot of depth. They can play more. How do you balance that as a coach? Well, if you don't like seeing them in the game, don't put them in the game. <laughs> no, seriously, Pat Riley used to have something. I, I don't forget how it goes or anything, but it was like rotate nine, play eight, but trust only five. And I like that. Boyajic trying to pester James. Rifle pass to Vergeau. Shot clock. Vergeau oh. into Delonte West, finding Hickson for the finish. Excellent ball movement for the Cavs, and they're back up by 18. I'll tell you one thing I like. I like the way that the Cavs are playing on both ends of the floor. Active, long, not quitting, and then on the offensive end, they're executing, getting into the scenes, forcing the Lakers to defend. An impressive showing to the Cavs on the final game of a four-game road trip. Ryan inside. He's down on the ground, gets it, looking, calls timeout. He is very frustrated, feeling he gets fouled. Again, a lot of contact. It's been all game long that they've let them play. But he is not happy, Mark. No, he's not happy, but Mike Brown certainly is. When you get offense like this, extra pass, get into the seams, and then you wind up with quality possessions, easy layups off of unselfish play. ESPN Clippers and Phoenix. Out in Phoenix, 8 Eastern time start, and the Nuggets and Blazers from Portland. A full slate of NBA action on Christmas Day, and then NBA Saturday, NBA TV Saturday, Washington and Minnesota. TNT resumes their doubleheaders next Thursday. Heat and Spurs, Sixers, and the Clippers. Bryant, nice fake to the basket. Up and under, Banker won't go. Rebound, Varejao. And a reaching foul on Odom. And Vergeau, and a technical foul called on Odom. Vergeau, and he does this well. He gets under the opponent's skin. He plays very physical basketball. And you're so right, but I like the way attacking, making it tough for Bryant. Your job, if you're Anderson Vergeau, is to be a pest. Your job is not to make friends or get phone numbers or, 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 or plan dinners. Your job, in order for this Cavs team to be successful, is to get under the skin of your opponent. All right, now can I go back, though, to I understand Carl Landry's number one on your ballot, but you, are, you, and always, two. All right, you love guys. Stats don't always tell the story. This guy, the impact he has on one of the best teams in the NBA is pretty impressive. No question. He is a very, very good player right there that rotation as you saw him come across good job of using his body to go straight up verticality was in force good non no call by the officials he knows how to play defensively on his own man and help and he knows how to play off lebron james at the other end meanwhile this equals the largest lead in the game west with another steal some careless passing by the lakers Careless passing by Parker there as Odom with the steal. Well, it's back to 20 with a minute to go here in the third. It was 20 in the second period. Lakers had cut it all the way down to six. And as Odom gets inside, back out Vujicic. Vujicic, not even close. Vujicic shooting just 37% from the field. James and Bryant matched up on this end. Hickson inside. Kobe Bryant has played the entire game. And with his team down 20, he's not sitting in the fourth quarter until his team is completely out of it if they get to that point. Block shot. Six remaining on the 24. Darnell Jackson will make an appearance. Give Verjao a breather. And a final 11.4, so Verjao doesn't pick up his fourth foul. He has three. Bryant for three. Puts it in. And again, boy, the Lakers needed that. Bujicic on James. Fires at the buzzer, off the mark, ending the third period. Another impressive period for the road team. LeBron James with the seven assists and 19. Kobe Bryant, big scoring. 
But the team right now trails by 17. The Lakers do. This presentation of the NBA Christmas special presented by Sprite continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Phil, you guys had cut the lead, their lead down to nine. What gave you problems in that third quarter? <laughs> It, you know, last year I said something, I got fined $50,000, what, $25,000 for saying it. So I won't say it, but it, it looks very uh, different out there, doesn't it? Kobe's going down at that end of the floor, getting knocked on the floor. We put them on the free throw line too many times this quarter. We didn't get there often enough ourselves. Without getting into any trouble, what do you say to your guys? They're obviously frustrated. You know, what they do you have say? to play. They have to contest better at the defensive end. We started contesting, but it was fouls. You know, it wasn't the kind of thing. That's the kind of contesting you want to have. It's shots or penetration or what they're doing. The other thing is, is offensively, we're making a lot of mistakes down there, just by not moving the ball well. But first of all, I want to say Merry Christmas to all our fans. We have to watch this game on uh, on a Christmas Day. Wow! Thank you, Phil. Because. All right, Lisa, you never know <laughs> what you're going to get from Phil in those in-game interviews. By the way, the free throw shooting, 15 attempts by the Cavs in the third, four for the Lakers. And the Cavs, really, they've been the more aggressive team almost all afternoon as O'Neal grabs the rebound. 17-point game as we begin the fourth. Lakers have won 11 straight here at home, best record in the NBA. A lot of it's done with defense, but it's the Cavs that have been the more impressive team here this afternoon. Shaq down low. Wanted to draw the foul. Gets it back again. It was mauled by Bynum. He thought he got hit the first time. And he will go to the free throw line for the first time this afternoon. You know, say what you want about Shaq. He's no longer the Shaq of old, but he has certainly done the job so far this afternoon for the Cavs. Scoring the basketball, finish at, finishing at the rim, putting pressure on Bynum, controlling the paint area defensively. This is what they envision. Yeah, and you know what? How many times do you think he's been fouled like that, where he's been hit in the head, grabbed around the shoulders? How many times do you think they've called flagrant fouls against O'Neal? You know, when he has been the one being hit. I, mean, I, I think those big guys take so many shots around the head area that it's unsafe. And it doesn't look like it hurts them at all. So let's check in with Lisa. Hey guys, we can also now call Shaquille O'Neal the big gift giver. I asked him what was the best gift that he gave this Christmas. A house. A house, guys, to his sister who has two kids. She didn't pick it out. She didn't know anything about it. She found out a couple of days ago. A house to his sister. Well, he's always been very, very generous. Not only with his family and friends, but in the community and all the charitable stuff is Delante West call for a traveling. Well, you could call him the big house. <laughs> <laughs> now, the big house, is ex he has definitely accepted his role. And with the Cavs winning and playing well at 22 and 8, the question, will, will he continue to accept it if, say, he doesn't play a bunch of fourth quarters or in a playoff game? But so far, he's been the ultimate team player. As Odom knocks down the jumper, and suddenly it's back to 12. And you touch on something because Mike Brown says, hey, only, I can only judge him on what he's done so far for me and this organization. And he's been uh, the ultimate professional, whether he's been in the ball game or not. Shaq down low, up and under, draws the foul. And they'll go back to the line where he just missed a couple. He's only 48% shooting from the line this season. When he backs in, you either have to double team or he's going to back you under the rim. Here he just backs in. I mean, there's nothing still that one defender can do with him. We've been to the free throw lines. Only three players in the history of the game have taken more free throws than Shaq. That's Carl Malone, Will Chamberlain, and Moses Malone. You know, but that's part of the problem. You're getting good offense with Shaq, but they're fouling him, and no results are occurring because he's missing foul shots. So if you're the Cavs, you got to find another way to run offense because this is not working. One for four this afternoon. Money. Money. <laughs> Give him the ball. But it does get you in the penalty. So when LeBron James or Mo Williams puts his head down and goes to the rim later in the quarter, you may well be in the penalty because of the fouls that O'Neal's been able to draw. Kobe Bryant jump shot won't go. O'Neal now 11 points, 7 rebounds. He's played 18 minutes. 
James back in, Kobe Bryant guarding him. That's what Lisa talked about earlier. Fourth quarter, Bryant wants to guard LeBron James. Alley you pass, nice feed. Mo Williams to Jamario Moon. Mo Williams having a terrific game. 21 points, six assists, five boards. Boone now guarding Kobe Bryant. Shot clock down to five. Kobe left-handed, blocked by O'Neal, but a foul. O'Neal upset, but he clearly caromed into Bryant. Well, this is a play that didn't happen in the past because it was three perimeter guys. Now you have a high flyer on the wing like Moon. Mo Williams does an outstanding job of getting into the thick of their defense and then putting it upstairs. That's what we're talking about. Playmaking ability. The foul they call on Moon, not on Shaquille O'Neal. Moon in his first year with this team. Nice addition, good defensive play. He wasn't drafted out of community college back in 2001, but his journey just began. He came over the next six seasons with the D League, the ABA, the CBA, Mexico, WBA, USBL, two years with the Globetrotters. He said he's played for 19 different teams in all those different leagues. Finally got a shot in Toronto because Michael Ray Richardson, his coach in the CBA, said become a defensive stopper. That's what he worked on, and that's what got him in the NBA. Well, also, you know he knows how to win playing with the Globetrotters. He never lost against the Generals. He's a winning player. Mo Williams from the corner. Nails a three. Another big shot. 24 points for Mo Williams. And a lead back up to 16. And right now, the Lakers are playing Generals defense. you got to find a way not only to score, but also to get stops. And to me, Lamar Odom has got to get more actively involved offensively. This guy is too good an offensive player not to be producing more efficiently. Offensively, Mo Williams making plays, not just lob passes, but he's a big time scorer. Fades off the down screen, makes the Lakers pay the price. Hand down, man down. <laughs> have trailed most of this game by as many as 20 right now down 16 with just over three minutes gone by in the fourth part of the reason to play of LeBron James as we look at our Percy Jackson ability tracker well you see 520 pounds banging into each other LeBron James posting up Ron Artest with the bully ball and then LeBron James great read off the pin down Fading for the three-point shot. He and Artest, really strong men going at each other. And really, LeBron James's game, while it's great for normal players, if you're the Lakers, you'd be happy with that stat line. But they just have not played well enough in totality to even have a chance to be in the game. Well, how about that? Lakers have to call a timeout. They use a 20. Couldn't get the ball inbounds after that last timeout. Kobe Bryant sitting down for the first time this afternoon. His team down by a bunch. Troll up by 16. Earlier this week, they snapped Phoenix's home winning streak. Phoenix had been undefeated at home and beat them. And right now, perhaps on the verge of snapping the Lakers' home winning streak. Lakers have won 11 in a row here at Staples. Martez, nice feet off, but Bynum not expecting the pass. But there's no reason not to expect the pass. Help comes, you roll to the basket. That's where he's been so effective, but he's just not on point this afternoon. Mo Williams has been on point as he throws it up to James. Well, Williams having his third straight terrific game. That time, miscommunication between those two. Odom and James with the foul. James looking at Mo Williams and asking him why he went one way, the pass went the other. Two, foul, two fouls on James. So if you're the Cavs, this is a point with Ryan on the bench. You can close out the ball game. You cannot afford to make careless mistakes and allow this Laker team to creep back in, and then the closer comes in. Kobe Bryant finally sitting down for the first time. Five on the shot clock, Odom kicks it out. Brown steps back, puts up the three. Won't go. And a rebound, James. Just three of 13 from downtown. 
He wants to go back in. Yeah, he banged his knee the other day against Oklahoma City. I've been bothering him a little bit. James gets to the basket. Moon with a hand in his face. Nice shot to Mario Moon. And it's up to 18 with seven and a half to play. Crowd once again, it's been pretty quiet. Odom is fouled. Odom will shoot free throws as Kobe Bryant now returns. Shannon Brown will sit. Laker bench again. It's the one area not necessarily of concern yet for Phil Jackson. But you see Bynum and Gasol obviously starters. Odom coming off the bench. But the Laker bench just has not been giving him the same type of consistent performance as they did last year. Part of it, Luke Walton is out. Pinched nerve. And they've also made some financial decisions over the last two years that diminished their firepower on the bench as well. Rodmanovich was traded away, you know, because they have a very high end. As you see Mitch Kupchak, the general manager of the Lakers, they have a high end starting group. And so their, their starting group puts them above the luxury tax. So that is going to impact your depth at times. You know, another guy is Curry off the way that you know he was signed away. He was a big part of their bench. Coming up on seven minutes remaining. An offensive oh, foul. Yeah. LeBron James a moving screen. That's his third. 84-68. Cavs have been up by as many as 20 in the first half. Lakers came back, cut it to six. Cavs went up again 20 in the third quarter. And then the Lakers come back a second time. They got a long way to go. Moon is 6'8", guarding Bryant. Bryant goes right past him and a hard foul by his former teammate. That's a smart play by Bryant. Feels certainly like he hasn't gotten a call all afternoon long, but your job is to continue to attack. Puts the ball on the floor, doesn't settle, forces the issue, finally gets a call and going to the line. This is good defense, good help by Shaq. You don't want to allow Bryant to get it going by scoring. Force him to go to the line. Five fouls now on Shaq. Bryant from the line, eight for eight this afternoon. I got a problem with Shaq, though. I'm getting text messages after you announced that he brought his sister a house. It just doesn't make my DVD players look that good anymore to my family members. <laughs> I'm upset. Yeah, but he may not have as big a family as you. <laughs> Take heart. <laughs> but hey, but you know what? I've done some investigative research, talking to some ball boys around the league, and guess who they said was one of the great tippers over the last 15, 20 years in the NBA? The guy sitting to your right? Right. Send him out for a Snicker bar, give him a 20, keep the change. <laughs> he could have done that with me as his coach. I would have gone and gotten a <laughs> Snicker bar. <laughs> well, that's good research. James to the basket, up and under, and banks it in, and it's 86-70. See, but you, if you're the big man of, you're Pau Gasol right there, LeBron James comes off on the curl, you're, you can't hug Ilgoskis. You've got to give help. Our test an offensive foul. Hey, this isn't Jamario Moon or somebody that's a non-scorer coming off. If you're Pau Gasol, forget Ilgoskis. Make James make that pass. You've got to take away the best finisher in the game. When he gets to the rim, he makes. Williams tried to jam it in there. Odom deflected it. James holds on to it, and then he's fouled on the pass. Second, check that third team foul on the Lakers. So the Cavs will inbound. These two, Ron Artest and LeBron James, have been physical all game long. I'm glad that the referees didn't fall for that. That's a horrible job of acting by Ron Artest. Fisher's got to give him some pointers. <laughs> that was an embarrassing flop right very, there. Very surprised and disappointed at Artest. <laughs> Williams falling away. Not a great shot there. Bryant will push. At the midway point of the fourth. Bryant spinning. Kicks it out. Artest wide open for three. Puts it in.
Kobe Bryant, who's now one rebound and two assists shy of a triple-double. Crowd here at the Staples Center coming alive a little bit. They've been quiet a lot tonight. Their team's been down by double figures the majority of the game. And that is a rare sight here at Staples. Moon high off the three. Oh, he banks it in as the shot clock expires. Jamario Moon, five of six from the field, 11 points off the bench. That's where all those trick shots from his glove brothers days are paying off. That kind of shot, that's a dagger. You're making a comeback, you play good defense, and he banks one in. The soul misses Sparge out on the rebound, and he's hammered. There's still plenty of time remaining, but th these are very deflating. Oh, you, you do everything right on the defensive end. High hands, the extra pass. And I know it's Christmas, but for Moon, the bank is certainly open. Big time shot for the Cavs. That really takes the air out of you defensively. And Ron Artest just fouled out of the game. Artest fouls out for the first time this season. But give Moon credit. He he has had sporadic minutes. Play didn't start in the rotation to begin the year. Played very well defensively. Gives him an athlete, which allows at times LeBron James to play at the four when they're going against the smaller, quicker teams like Phoenix. Good signing by Danny Fair. First started with Toronto, then Miami after that journey with all the minor leagues. Verjao puts it up and in. Verjao, another good game. Nine points, eight boards. 91-73. And looks as Odom comes flying in, knocks into Verjao. Three on two break for the Cavs. James. Bryant goes at Ogowskis. There we go. go. Kobe Bryant, 9 of 28 from the field. And a reach and foul on Fisher. And it's been a frustrating afternoon. Bryant and James talking after James saying something to Derek Fisher. Hey, Derek Fisher can get nasty on the floor. You could give me the Derek Fishers. I mean, that's a flagrant foul, whatever. But Derek Fisher, we saw him in the la last year in the playoffs against the Rockets, did the same thing, yep. where he just blasted Scola. I mean, this guy is a he is a great guy, but he is a nasty competitor. Very physical, and Williams will go to the free throw line. James. You like what he did, takes exception to knocking his teammate like that when Over had something to say. And certainly you give Fisher credit for being a guy that's on edge and will compete and do whatever it takes. But I like what LeBron did. Hey, Mo Williams, you get on out of here. Let me handle this. And he corrects Derek Fisher, makes a point, doesn't go overboard, makes the point, selling it not just not just to Mo Williams, but to the entire Cavaliers bench. This is a star willing to get his teammates back. Lead back up to 20. With the foul. By the way, how about Mo Williams on this trip? He had 24 against Phoenix, 27 in that overtime victory against Sac, Sacramento, and 26 more points. And guys still chirping at each other. Odom and Verjai. The lake of frustration starting to boil over a little bit here. I think they should give everybody a technical foul on the floor right now. Just so all the stop, you know. Everybody's mumbling. This is the wired we should get right now. I want to know what they're saying to each other right now. Don't give me Phil Jackson's we're better than this. I want to hear what Mo Williams and LeBron are saying right now. This, this is uh, the afternoon. There are many children watching. Mo Williams and Lamar Odom each have good technicals. For Odom, it's his second technical, so he's automatically gone. This continues to puzzle me. Why do guys who get thrown out get standing ovations? It's a very good question. I, I don't, I just, I'm puzzled by that. <laughs> so Odom is done. Our test is done. Looks like the Lakers are done tonight. They're down 20 with just <laughs> over four minutes remaining. And Phil Jackson won't substitute, so he just got teed up because they called the delay a game. And a second delay a game. 
and they're throwing the foam fingers on the floor. Now this one getting a little out of hand. They gave out foam fingers and the crowd throwing out. And this is unfortunate. Now what they'll have to do, the official will have to ask Lawrence Tanner to make a announcement to the crowd to please stop throwing the things out on the floor. Fortunately, they're just these foam fingers and don't hurt. And can't really cause any kind of damage. And here's LeBron James. See how he's gathering his team. You can bet he's probably saying something to the effect of it. Let's keep our composure. We've got a great win here. Let's just get these four minutes done and get out of here. You love that leadership, Mark. Well, that's what it's all about. Grab the guys and, and, and send a message. Hey, let's stay on course. Do not get sidetracked by all the other things that's going on. We came in with a purpose. We have accomplished it thus far. Four more minutes. You know, it just shows you peer pressure. One idiot throws his on the floor. And then some other people just follow suit. You're absolutely right. That's embarrassing. If you come to a game and throw a phone thing. The Williams will shoot. Protected them. This is now the largest lead of the game. Cavs go up by 21 with just over four minutes remaining. Well, it's been, we said this right from the start. Pretty physical game, and they let them play. There were a lot of contact on a lot of plays, but my feeling was they let it go with both ways. Well, you know, you can critique each and every call. Overall, the officiating had absolutely nothing to do with this result here tonight. This was a Cavalier team that played exceptionally well, particularly a dominating defensive performance with size and length, and the Lakers just didn't play well. And I totally agree with you. You can play the same exact game, and sure, Bryant may have some more free throws and some more calls, but that has nothing to do with it. You've been thoroughly outplayed on both ends of the floor. Bryant hits right up on LeBron James, which is still competing, defending against his former Olympic teammate. Reach in foul. Now, Kobe, he reached in before LeBron knocked him down. That's my take on that. Well, first of all, you got to love the competitiveness of Kobe Bryant. This is how you fight around the screen. This is how you keep a body on him and then sustain it. Good job of fighting over the screen once again. A lot of contact. Puts his body in front of him. To me, that's an offensive foul on LeBron James. How about Kobe reaching in before, though? That's outstanding defense. Both guys getting after it. That's a shove extending the arm. How about this? This is what I like, as some idiots are throwing water bottles on the floor. Now, now that's where it can get dangerous where somebody could get hurt. Now you need the security here at the Staples Center. You know, obviously an unfortunate scene here on Christmas Day. Fans frustrated, as you said, Jeff. One guy throws it off, and now they all think throws one on. They all think, and it looks like in one section the fans are doing a good job. They're pointing out somebody who threw one of the bottles. And here's my take on that last play. Whether you thought it was a block or a charge, how many players, let alone MVP type players, up 20 would compete that hard with 3.45 to go in a blowout? Right. See, to me, that's what separates Bryant. He's an every play player. By the way, that last technical was on Kobe Bryant. James misses the free throw. Josh Powell in the game. Just over three and a half remaining. And all Cavaliers. Brown misses. Now the rebound. Back up and banks it in. Lakers briefly took a six point lead in the opening minutes. Cavs stormed back and have led by as much as 20, led by double figures. Majority of the game. One of the more impressive performances of the season. Moon fires away. <laughs> it's another one. How about Moon off the bench, six of seven from the field? I know if you're the Lakers, you'll live with that shot. That's a big time play by Moon, but if you're the Lakers, that's a shot that you're willing to live with. Gannon Brown to the basket. Gets it inside to Bryant for the finish. Under three minutes. Bryant still battling. Oh, Williams will bring it up. Terrific all-around game for Williams. 27 points, 7 assists, 5 boards.
James wants it. Williams throws it right to Kobe Bryant. Brown goes up. Williams gets out of the play. And it just slips in. And Mike Brown doesn't like just the last couple of minutes as the lead's been cut to 16. And we'll take a timeout. And good defense by the Lakers, but you put yourself in position. Good things will happen. The Cavs worked hard all game long, and Moon continues to knock down Jays. Time now for the Flow TV flow of the game as the Lakers down by 16. The Cavs dominating much of the afternoon here at Staples Center. And our Flow TV flow of the game starts off with Kobe Bryant. Hadn't shot the ball well, a near triple double. As he's taken a pounding going to the basket, officials have let them play. The bench, a key difference in this game. The Cavs bench, just superb here this afternoon. And although LeBron James hasn't had what you would call a spectacular game, James and his team have been in control much of the afternoon. Tonight's ABC Friday Movie of the Week, by the way, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chess, Johnny Depp, will be seen in its entirety after the Cavs and the Lakers. Our NBA Christmas special on ABC and ESPN. Five games for you. This number three. Two more tonight on ESPN as Mo Williams will bring it up. All road team wins so far. That's right. Miami winning in New York. Boston winning in Orlando. And Cleveland on the verge of a nice win as Mo Williams mm -hmm. traveled. I always would rather to play on the road on Christmas. Because? Well, you could you could get your team more focused. You, they weren't worrying as much about the gifts and all that. It's just a hard day for the home team. Bryant to the basket. Not that time. Yeah. Yeah. The rebound. Yeah. Cavs defense has just been terrific. James puts it in and a foul. This will be the 21st straight game that the Cavs defense did not allow a team to shoot 50% against them. Way below. Lakers just 36% shooting. If you're Shannon Brown on that last transition defensively, what do you do other than pray? Not much you can do when a locomotive is coming full steam ahead at you and has the ability to finish with either hand. Well, loose ball foul on Verizal. The thing I would like to see with the locomotive is if you're Shannon Brown, you just don't let him go. You don't fly by out of the way. You either go up and contest, you foul, you do something. I'm going to say this. Derek Fisher's still in the game. It's not going to be like that. I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be different. Fisher right now is sitting out with an 18-point Cleveland lead. Powell misses the free throw. Give the gift of the NBA this holiday season. Go on to NBA.com backslash tickets now to shop for someone on your list. It's not too late. The NBA where memories happen. And, and really, you start looking at the bench for the Lakers and the way they haven't played well, the thing it's done is it's up Derek Fisher's minutes in some of these games to where Phil Jackson doesn't want it. Today, he's played over 35 minutes. That's a lot of minutes for a 35-year-old guard. And again, you look too with Luke Walton being out. And Walton is not going to have numbers that will you know, blow you away, but he plays an important part on this team, whatever the role is. Now there was a foul called yep. by Sean Corbin before the ball was inbounded. That should be an away from the play foul with under two minutes to go. If it came before the ball was inbounded. This should be anybody shooting one shot, and then they inbound again. This is to prevent the hack-a-shack type of fouling in the last two minutes of a game away from the ball or before the ball comes in. Right. That's what that's what they call. It's only in the last two minutes of regulation and overtime. And again, one shot and then possession. That's why you see teams play that hack a shack up until two minutes to go. No worried about hack and shack tonight as he is did his job, 11.7 rebounds, and that's a good day's work for him right now. Well, I thought he played well, and I, Mark mentioned it on one highlight. I thought defensively he was better against the pick and roll and quicker in rotation on baseline drives today. I, I thought he had a, a really nice game. 
Yeah, that's, I'm sorry, but that's one of the things that Mike Brown talked about that surprised him initially when they got Shaq, how agile his feet were. He was certainly a little extra motivated today playing back here at the Staples Center. What's impressive, too, is, is Cleveland offensively is Moon knocks it away from Bryant. Offensive foul on Brown. The Cleveland Cavs shooting 55% for the game. Now, the highest the team has shot against the Lakers all season is just 52. And as we said, coming in, the Lakers number one in opponent's field goal percentage. And here we're saying Shaquille O'Neal today got off to a good start on the roll to the rim, catch and finish. And this is how you shoot 55%. You get layups at the rim. Some of these, to me, should have been fouls where you're putting them to the line. But the Cavaliers have play a, played a well-rounded game at both ends of the floor. It's got to be one of their best performances of the season. Vujicic knocks down a three. One cuts it to 15, but only a minute two remaining. They've led by double figures the entire fourth quarter. And this will snap the Lakers' home winning streak at 11. And for the Cavs, they'll finish their four-game road trip with three straight wins. As we mentioned, they open up with a loss in Dallas. But then they beat Phoenix, beat Sacramento in overtime, and handily defeated the Lakers here at the Staples Center. James, 24 points, nine assists, and four rebounds. And they here in the crowd on their way out. Watching a rare... The Laker loss here at home. They were 16 and 2. They played more home games than anybody in the league. As James has threw it out of bounds. Don't forget, coming up tonight, Pirates of the Caribbean. Dead man's chess with Johnny Depp to be seen in its entirety after this game. Bujic misses, and Williams will dribble it out. A very impressive win. Here for the Cleveland Cavaliers as they'll improve to 23 and 8 on the season, 12 and 6 on the road. Three straight road wins to finish this trip, and the Lakers fall now to 23 and 5. Best shooting performance of the season against the Lakers, and the Cavs do it, led by LeBron James and Mo Williams. Williams was superb. Kobe Bryant played a lot of minutes, scored a lot of points, but didn't get a lot of help. Didn't shoot the ball particularly well. But there's his Christmas present right there. As the Lakers fall to LeBron James and the Cavs. Lisa? Thanks, guys. LeBron, what was working so well for you guys tonight? Enough to cause their own fans to boo them off the court on Christmas Day. Um, we, we just covered for each other all night on the defensive end. Um, on the offensive end, we... Um, we seen a lot of their pressure in the second quarter, so in the third quarter we knew they was going to try to do the same thing, but we just slowed down and executed the right way. You said before the game that this game would be a measuring stick for you guys, so where do you think you came out? Um, it was a good performance by us. Um, you know, defensively, we definitely did a great job of helping one another and not relying on just one defender to guard another def uh, the offensive guy. So um, it was a good win for us, and, um, you know, we needed that having this long road trip. All right, thanks a lot. Congratulations. All right, Merry Christmas. All right, Lisa, the two All-Stars for the Cavs played well. The bench played really well, and the defense was superb. Cavs 102, Lakers 87. We'll be back with more after this time.